Hi, I'm Phileas Dane and I'm the Safari Expert and this is the third episode in my series on Mashar to Game Reserve. Now in the previous episode we spent some time in those beautiful sandstone rocks down at Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu and we visited some of the region's most beautiful viewpoints. In this episode we're going to skip our normal game drives and spend the morning and afternoon in Photo Mashatu's underground hide. And a little bit later I'll also show you my home away from home, Mashatu Lodge. Today is a very exciting day. As you can see, I've just woken up. It's half past four in the morning and the reason we got up so early is so that we can get to Fado Mashatu's Motobole elephant hide before the sun comes up. The drive from Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu to the underground hide took about an hour, but it was worth the early wake up because it allowed us to get completely settled in before it got light. It's 20 past 6 and we're finally settled in the hide. We've all got our spots and the sun is probably going to pop its head out in about 10 minutes or so. It's beautiful weather. Yesterday was very cold and windy, but luckily today it's nice and clear and hopefully the elephants are going to come and have a drink. Speaking about drinks, I think it's about time for a cup of coffee. Front side your first impression it's very nice it's a lot bigger than i thought um the area around it is spectacular you, you can see what's gonna come in and drink and now we just wait and see like a, like a. with our camera set up and a cup of coffee in our hands we were ready to see what the morning held in store for us yeah this is the life Photo Mashatu's Motobole elephant hide consists of two shipping containers that were joined and sunk into the ground to give you a unique eye level perspective of the birds and animals that come to drink at the man made waterhole right in front of it. The fact that it faces south means you get good light on your subjects both in the mornings and in the afternoons. There's space for eight photographers inside, and Photo Mashatu provides bean bags on swivel plates that are extremely handy if you have heavy equipment. Solar panels power a pump with which the water level can be raised if it starts dropping and they allow you to charge your batteries as well. Visitors to the hide are also joined by one of Photo Mashatu's experienced photo guides and in our case it was Aubrey Tseling who helped us make the most of all our photographic opportunities. And so I, I do this on full manual and um, it's probably automatic ISO. Uh, automatic ISO helps a lot as the staff and the around and light changes so I also do matrix metering um, yeah, and yeah I think I think they're set up. We were amazed by the variety of birds that came to drink early in the morning. And then, out of the blue, the one thing we had been dreaming of seeing ever since we first knew that we'd be coming to the underground hide finally arrived. It's about 10 past 9 and the first herd of elephants have finally arrived. Look at this. It 
happens so quickly. We're just sitting here, we haven't seen any mammals really for an hour or two, just all the birds. And then suddenly Francois said, elephants, elephants. And here they are. As they drank, more and more elephants joined, completely surrounding the other side of the water. After quenching their thirst, the elephants disappeared just as quickly as they had arrived, kicking up dust as they headed straight to Mashatu's central area, where they would feed for most of the day. Oh my goodness, that never gets old. <laughs> yeah, I see this so regularly, but each time it happens, Let's get to know the goosebumps. Absolutely. Yeah. Ah. Magical. I'm just about taking photos. If you do take photos though, knowing which of your lenses to use when the elephants drink can be tricky. Wide angle lenses are great to capture whole animals and the herd. Magic. Sure. Magic. Here we go. Oh, wow. But don't forget to bring your long lenses to capture close ups. That is amazing. My advice is to always bring all the gear you have. The Photomashatu underground hide closes in the wet season from December to February. And personally, I've had the most elephant sightings at the hide in July, August and September when there's plenty of food for them in the area. If you come too early in the year, rainwater elsewhere in the reserve may lure away some of the game that would otherwise drink here. And if you come too late in the year, the lack of mupani leaves, which the elephants love to eat, may cause them to migrate to larger riverbeds where they'll find more to feed on. Having said that, because the waterhole is located on a path that the local herds have used for centuries, you always have a chance of seeing them when you're inside the hide. You'll see that in the mornings, they typically come in from the right as they descend from the higher lying areas down to the central area. And in the afternoon, they typically come from the left or front as they head back to the higher ground on the same path. We saw three different herds during our morning session and early on in our afternoon session, a big old bull spent ages drinking right in front of us before he was joined by another big herd coming in from the central area. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I got wet. <laughs> I got wet. <laughs> I love it. Oh man, it makes me happy. Visiting the photo Mashatu underground hide is not the only unique activity that Mashatu offers. Apart from your normal game drives and bushwalks, you can also book a multi day walking safari where you sleep out in the bush, a horseback safari with Horizon Horseback Mashatu, or a mountain bike safari, either for a morning or an afternoon, or for four days where you also sleep out in the bush. I've done this on a couple of occasions and riding on elephant footpaths through Mashatu's rolling landscape, looking for game from the back of a mountain bike is one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done. If you'd like to learn more about Mashatu's adventure safaris, as well as the photo Mashatu underground hide, please click on the links in the description below. Speaking of which, I've also added one to Derek Solomon's Soundscapes from the African Bush. I don't think people realize just how difficult it can be to record good sound while on safari. Sometimes it's too windy. Sometimes there's camera shutters firing in the background. Or sometimes it's as simple as someone talking in the background. <laughs> what do you want? Green pigeon. Green pigeon. <laughs> and when there's finally no unwanted noise, of course the birds you're trying to record go quiet. 
Many of the sounds you hear in this series were recorded by Derek Solomon right here in Mashatu and then added afterwards to enhance the viewing experience. If you're a filmmaker looking for good wildlife foley, please check out his website. And watch this space because my hope is to join Derek on a sound safari later this year. Our third night was spent at Mashatu Lodge and the reason I call it my home away from home is because I used to live here permanently for four years when I was still studying the reserve's leopard population. Hello everybody! Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Most of the staff at Mashatu Lodge are like family. <laughs> and seeing them all really made me think about the good old days. Mashatu Lodge is the reserve's largest camp and it has a Wi-Fi room, a large comfortable lounge and two swimming pools which come in very handy during Mashatu's hot summers. There's also a curio shop that sells things like clothing and small gifts as well as a dining area and a bar called the Gin Trap that both overlook the camp waterhole. One of my favorite places in camp is the Discovery Room, which houses a wealth of information about the reserve and its animals. You'll learn more about animal skulls and bones, predator tracks, the reserve's rich archaeological history, as well as wildlife research projects. The Discovery Room is just one of the things that make Mashatu Lodge the perfect camp for families. And no camp tour would be complete without a look at the rooms, of which Mashatu Lodge has 14. If you'd like to stay as close as possible to Mashatu's Game Ridge Central Area and you're looking for comfort levels somewhere in between the safari tents of Mashatu Tent Camp and Tuli Safari Lodge Mashatu and the super luxurious Mashatu Euphorbia Villas, Mashatu Lodge is the camp for you. In the next episode, we celebrate Tabby's birthday. Oh, do I have to? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we head for the reserve's most remote camp, Mashatu Tent Camp and we have some more epic sightings of elephants. We also successfully tracked down lion, cheetah, and the cats Mashatu is so famous for, leopards.